So we're Charity Check-In. Uh, think of us as kind of an Amazon Smile for brick and mortar retailers. Uh, Amazon Smile is, if anybody in here doesn't know, uh, is a micro donation platform that rewards loyalty for Amazon shoppers. Uh, we're bringing that technology, that functionality, and a whole lot more to uh, where 90% of the retail dollars still spent, which is a brick and mortar. Uh, if you get a chance, uh, please do download the application. It's currently available in both uh, Android and iOS, and you can start donating right here uh, in the building. If you like, we've done a number of donations over here. Um, so. The premise of the company is everybody has their own personal cause. We've all been into retailers where, where they ask you to use your purchasing power to donate to a cause that they choose, uh, which in some cases works, in some cases it doesn't for people. Uh, but we do know that almost everybody, uh, according to our research, uh, has a cause that they like to, to support along the way. Um, and we also know that uh, a, a lot of small donations can go an awful long way uh, in solving some of the problems. Uh, our goal is to become the world's largest giving engine. Uh, retail executions are really spotty at best. I mean, they're very confusing. They cause, I love this one over here, the doing good, feeling bad, uh, kind of you know, corralling you at the checkout to get you to donate something and when you've got a line of 15 people behind you and you're just like, okay, fine, right? And you have no idea what you're donating to. Um, the biggest thing here is uh, moms and millennials, they choose four to one that to uh, support brand when they are allowed to choose their own charity versus choosing from a curated list. Um, cause related marketing is extremely expensive. What most people don't realize is that you typically will spend, they will typically spend more than a dollar to raise a dollar on event day, so, which means they've got to extend the effectiveness of that marketing spend over the course of the rest of the year, which is what we, we help them do. Uh, from a consumer perspective, you know the statistics line up very well with what it is that we're we're you know offering in terms of a service to the consumers. Uh, Love the 50% of giver, givers donate because of friend ask me, which plays into our social media component. Uh, and the 2015 uh, CCSI up for the fifth consecutive year, uh, and that actually that index is going through the roof uh, versus historical. We know that the impact of so or we know the impact of social media on purchases. Uh, there's a lot of data that is out there that talks about that. More recently, we absolutely know the impact that social media can have on giving uh, with the ALS Ice Bucket Challenge. Not only did they raise over $100 million to date, but the most important statistic here is they've driven 2.1 million new donors. They didn't just get old donors to donate more, they actually attracted 2.1 million new donors to their, uh, to their cause through the use of social media. Uh, so what are we? We took this information together. We are a social media marketing platform that uses brand-sponsored check-ins to do really two things. Number one, generate that donation, a micro-donation that is brand-sponsored for the nonprofit. Second is we post that ad and the donation to the user's news, uh, Facebook news feed, okay? Uh, there are two kinds of brand sponsors that actually pay the bill here, that pay for the donation itself. The first kind is a retail sponsor, which is very foot traffic aware. They're geo-targeting you outside in the same way that Foursquare would to go into their store or to be near their store and check in. What they get out of this is not only might they get foot traffic, but they'll also get the advertising platform that we provide by the post going to your Facebook news feed. And, they, and this is a, a new customer acquisition tool for them. The other very important part of our, of our model is uh, attracting super sponsors. Uh, and what they're looking for is not necessarily that you are outside the front door of a particular location. What they're looking for is our ad platform. They want to get into the Facebook news feed, which there's really two ways to do that. One, you can pay Facebook a dollar, right? Or you can give your potential customer a dollar to donate to their favorite charity on, on your, your behalf, right? And that then all of their friends get a chance to see that. So. Uh, those are the two different kinds of sponsors. Our solution is really simple. You open up the application. When you first download it, by the way, you have to, you have to uh, sign in, log in with your Facebook uh, newsfeed login. Once you do that, from that point on, this is your dashboard. You can do a bunch of things on your dashboard. But one of the first things you do is you click on this here, pick from over 15 million charities that we have in our database, from the IRS database, uh, whatever that, that happens to be. Uh, and then uh, you would pick where you are, you pick your location, your, if you're at a Starbucks or a particular retailer or even here at this particular address. Um, then you would give, be given an opportunity to see uh, a promotional message or an advertising message from the sponsor, whether that could be in the form of a video ad, it could be in the form of a coupon or other promotion. Then you've got, uh, and then what happens is it opens up, you hit post, it opens up the Facebook interface, that posts to your Facebook newsfeed for everyone to see, you can add a message and so forth there. 
Um, we talked about this fan page, the best use of your Facebook dollar, our impact on, on key stakeholders. We're, in a, we're working in a very big market here, obviously. We've got a very big uh, addressable marketplace. Um, key strategic uh, advantages of our model. We've got a, a simple revenue model. We just take a fee, an, uh, an agency fee, off of each donation, which is completely invisible to the charity and to the consumer. We have a large built-in audience with the Facebook news feed and very low customer acquisition costs. Um, and then I think that's probably the best. best thing. Here's our founding team. <laughs> founding team, great. Thank you. Thank you very much. I get to take two questions. Uh, two questions, great questions. Way back. How do retailers respond to this? Because I know a lot of retailers like having a relationship with the charities that they support. Yep. So have you had best cases that you share information? Uh, that's a great question. So from a retail perspective, there are the larger retailers uh, will have typically chosen charities that they support. But again, the, when we show them the data that says that consumers, number one, like prefer four to one to be able to choose their own charity, that's compelling to them. Uh, the other part of this is it's not hard. One of the biggest challenges for brands is uh, kind of the, the, the credibility of that association with any particular charity. We completely eliminate that problem for them because what you're doing, what they're doing is they're, they're supporting their customer. They're not supporting any particular charity. They're supporting the person that is the most important thing to them, which is their customer or their potential customer, and letting them pick the charity. So. Yes, there are two different ways to handle that. Second question? Yes? How many businesses have joined this and how many, you, how many have you, how much have you raised? Raised? Uh, well, uh, well, we'll go to the first part first. Uh, we launched in Spokane, uh, Washington, which is where my co-founder uh, is located. And we've got about 30 retailers and uh, we've got a couple of super sponsors in that market. A number of charities are participating. We've got a bank uh, brand that's participating in that marketplace. We've got about 750 users at this point. <clears throat> it's a little bit early to figure out, you know, to kind of extrapolate, you know, overall user behavior out of that. But they're using it three, four times a week, which is pretty encouraging. Uh, mostly restaurants, uh, coffee shops, that kind of thing. <clears throat> um, and what I'm, in, what we're in the process of doing is now we're going to take the summer and we're going to launch here in the Boston market, and then we're going to go. Through we just actually won, found out last week, uh, we were selected to a B2B, a very prestigious B2B uh, accelerator up in Seattle, a bunch of Microsoft guys, and um, called Nine Mile Labs. And so we're going to be up there for four months launching in Seattle with their help and their assistance and their guidance and mentoring. And we're also going to be spending the summer here in Boston launching in, in a larger marketplace to kind of take it to the next level. Thank you.